Hello and welcome to another geography clip. And this one's all about explaining topographic maps. Topographic maps are so important for geographers and geography students to understand because they are the foundation of so many other geography skills that we use. So, uh, those could include things such as aspect and grid and area reference, cross sections, time and distance relationships, bearings, line of sight, quadrants, vertical exaggeration, determining the gradient of slopes, and also looking at density. So if you have a good understanding of what's happening with our topographic map, these other skills are just going to slot into place. So what I'm going to do to begin with is just look at a very um, theoretical understanding of topographic maps and then go and have a look at an actual map, um, which is slightly more complicated, but if you understand the basics, I'll build very quickly. So the basis of a topographic map is to solve uh, one key problem. The fact that maps are flat, maps are two-dimensional, whereas our world is undulating, our world is contoured, our world has a um, huge gradient in it. So how do we take a three-dimensional world and put it into two-dimensional maps? Well, the answer is the topographic map. Topographic map works like this. Geographers go out into the field and they actually measure mountains. They measure how high parts of the mountain are above sea level, how high above the ocean the land is or parts of the land are. So they go out and measure, and in this case, geographers go out and trace the bottom of the mountain. They'll walk around it and measure everywhere that's 20 metres above sea level. Then they'll mark it onto our, our map. They'll put a large circle showing the outline of the mountain and they'll mark it exactly how high it was. Then they'll go up the mountain and they'll do the same measurement again. This time it'll be higher above, it'll be 40 metres, and they'll mark that inside their topographic map as well. And they'll mark how high it was. Again they'll do the same, this time 60 metres above, they'll draw another circle inside and it'll be 60 metres. Now it's getting smaller every time because at the bottom of the mountain it's very broad and wide, but as we go higher the mountain narrows out. And so the same thing here, our circles narrow out and get smaller and smaller because they can fit inside each other. This so next one's 80 metres above. Put that there, 80 metres above. Very straightforward. Just another one. Here we are, the circle's very small now, or the, the mountain's very small, so the circle will be very small at 100 metres above. This line here is really interesting because the line's cutting through, but you can see that the uh, land or the line it cuts away. There's two points there. So geographers will draw that by putting in two circles down here, just like that, to show that there's a, a gap between them. Now, lastly, we have the top of the mountain. But to go to the top of this mountain, to go to 140, we're going to miss out on the top of this mountain. So geographers will still measure the top of the mountain or the summit of the mountain, but they'll use it as a spot height. So over here on the topographic map, it'll just be marked with a black dot or a, or a small, generally a black dot actually, and they'll put the, the actual spot height. Even though everything else has gone up in increments of 20, this one wouldn't fit, but we still mark the spot height. Now, every single one of these lines is called a contour line. Every single one of these lines is referred to as a contour line. Please be aware of that. Okay, so let's have a look at how this might work um, when we interpret on a real map. The first thing to note is that geographers are not going to mark on the height for every single line. It's too time consuming and in fact the height of each line should be more obvious. So here we have 1500 metres. This is what we refer to as the index line. From the index line we can work out what the value of every other contour line is. And we refer to that as a contour interval. What does every single line go up by? That is the contour interval. And we can work that out quite simply. What we determine is that if there's one, two, three lines, and we know that the third line is 1,500 metres above, it means that if we divide one, two, three into 1,500, it'll tell us how much each line goes up by. So three into 1,500 is obviously 500. So one line is, the bottom line is 500, the next is 1,000, 1,500, 2,000, 2,500. 3,000. The same will apply on this mountain here. I've just simply marked it on this map, map here. So that means the contour interval for this map is 500 meters. But let's imagine the index line wasn't 1,500. The index line can be anything. In this instance, let's imagine it's 60 meters. That means that the contour interval has to be different. So we've got 1, 2, 3. 3 into 60 obviously goes 20 times. So that means every single um, contour line on this map is going up by 20. That means the contour interval for this map is 20 metres. Now every single um, map you get will have the contour interval already printed down with the scale. So always look, when the first thing you should do when you look at a, a contour or topographic map is have a look at what the contour interval is. 
One more point I want to make is that at the bottom of every mountain, you will find that there is a river running or some sort of creek or something along these lines. It's because gravity, when it rains, gravity will push any water that lands on these slopes down towards the lowest point. And so please be mindful at the bottom of most mountains, you're going to find some sort of water course. And please don't confuse that. Students will sometimes think that they're contour lines and count them as contour lines. They are not. They're at the bottom of a mountain. They'll often be different coloured or, or big thick lines or even labelled river. Be aware that these are not contour lines, but these are rivers. Okay, let's move on. So was another key thing we need to understand is how we go about drawing these parts of mountains, these really sheer and steep parts of mountains. Particularly it's an important thing to know where there's a cliff because you clearly don't want to go walking um, or trying to build something on this part of a mountain when um, clearly it's, it's perilous. So um, how do we manage that? Well, the answer is the closer together these lines are, the steeper the slope. So you'll see here and you'll see here and you'll see up here, the lines are extremely close together. Whereas this section here, the lines are quite far apart. So that means the slope's, the slope's not going to be nearly as steep. So this point here, where they're all touching here, will show this really steep part of the mountain, these cliffs. That helps us um, identify. So anywhere where the contour lines are touching each other is a cliff. And again, there's a river. Just to reinforce that point, we'll often find those. Okay, have a go at this. Give it a pause, please. All right, let's quickly run through it. What is the contour interval of this map? Well, we start with 200. It's the fourth line, 1, 2, 3, 4. 200 divided by 4 is obviously 50. So that means every line, the contour interval for this map is 50. Locate the contour index. Well, that's the contour index there. These questions are out of order. I should have fixed that, but it doesn't matter. Locate the cliff. So anywhere where those lines are touching, here we go. We clearly have a cliff up here. Very good. What is the height of the highest point on this map? Well, it'll be somewhere around here. Let's find out where that height is. We're moving up in 50, so 50, 100, 150, 200, 250, 300, 350, 400. So somewhere around here, somewhere around 400 meter mark, we're going to find the top of the mountain. And where is the river likely to flow? Anywhere along the base of the mountain. It's pretty straightforward. All right, here is an actual um, topographic map that I want you to have a look at. Um, try and figure out what that would be. I'm not going to help you, so give that a crack. All right. Um, just a quick point is that um, Gills Hill, Gills Knobs are up here, so have a go. That is, and um, Mount Perisher is here. So, um, sorry, back Mount Perisher. Mount Perisher is here. So, um, try and figure out that for the questions two and three. Let's do another one. Um, contour info for this map. Have a go at these ones. Okay, so that's all you need to understand with topographic maps. Um, you need to know that they are lines which are used to show the height above sea level. Um, to work out what each line is going up by or what the contour interval is, you'll need to figure out what the index line is and then you'll need to make calculation based on that. But rather, apart from that, that's all really simple and I think that you should excel um, with any topographic issue you have from um, now on. Um, if you like the video, give it a thumbs up. If you hate it, give it a thumbs down. If you want to leave a comment, please go ahead. If you want another film made on something, please, please um, make that comment. Thank you very much.